Hi guys, in this lesson we'll take a look at the ideal batch reactor. So the first question we've got to ask is, what is a batch reactor? So typically these are large vessels which have no inflow or outflow within the system when in operation. And these reactors are most commonly found in the pharmaceutical, alcoholic beverage industries and lab scale systems. And they're often a stirrer to help improve the reaction efficiency. So a typical schematic of a batch reactor would be something like this, whereby we don't have any inflow and we don't have any outflow. Now when modelling or designing any piece of equipment, it's helpful to have a set of assumptions which we can make to help simplify our equations. And here what we'll focus on is the ideal system. Whereas further in our courses, we look at the more advanced modelling for non-ideal systems. So the assumptions here that we make is that we have no in or out flow, we have perfect mixing, we have a uniform temperature distribution, and we have a uniform concentration. Now this helps us when we see the equations a bit later on, whereby we can neglect some of the terms within the mass and energy balances. Because if we have a uniform temperature distribution, then we can assume that the temperature change is negligible. And for a uniform concentration, we can assume that the mass transfer is kept at a steady state. Now when modelling in the reactor, we need to use the general mole balance. And we can tailor this equation for our set of assumptions. So the general mole balance is that the amount of A that's produced per unit time must be equal to the amount of A leaving per unit time plus or minus the amount of A which reacts per unit time. Now the plus and minus here simply denote whether we are producing A or whether we are consuming A and then plus the amount of A accumulated per unit time. So here, what we say is that for this system here, we can rewrite this in terms of concentration, in terms of flow and reaction rate constant. So here we can have F0 CA0, so this is the feed flow rate, multiplied by the initial concentration equals the outlet flow rate multiplied by the final concentration plus or minus, now this is the rate of the reaction, minus Ra multiplied by the volume of the reactor plus the volume of the reactor multiplied by the different partial differential of Ca over dt. So what we're saying here is that the amount accumulated is represented by the amount of the concentration of A per unit time that it spends within the reactor. Now if we have steady state conditions, what we can assume is that the accumulation term becomes zero. So because there's no flow in or out, the amount introduced and the amount leaving can be set to zero. So therefore we can neglect these two terms. So that means that these two terms will cancel each other out. And what we are then left with is minus RAV plus V, partial differential of CA over T. Now we can take this a step further and cancel out the volumes, which would leave us, when we rearrange, we can have minus DCA over DT is equal to plus or minus the rate of the reaction. Now if we rearrange for T in this system, we will get the batch time that corresponds to an ideal batch reactor. So if we rearrange, we'll get DT equals minus DCA over minus RA. If we integrate, then we can get T equals the integral of minus DCA over minus RA which if we integrate with the limits of 0 to t, so that's initial time of 0 to some final time t, then when time is at 0, we have the initial concentration, ca not. The final concentration is achieved when we have the final batch time.
Now in order to cancel out this negative, what we do is invert these limits. So by inverting the limits, we get rid of this negative. So we have the final integral is CA0 to CA, or the integral for DCA over minus RA. And that is the equation for the batch time. Now sometimes it's helpful to model this in terms of the conversion. So the batch time in terms of the conversion can be expressed as, so this is the relationship between the final concentration and the conversion of the initial concentration. So CA will equal CA0 bracket 1 minus XA. So what we can say here is if we then replace the CA, so instead of having DT, we'll have DXA or just DX, this just means with respect to A. So what we can then do is have DCA over DXA is equal to minus CA0. And then we can include the minus RA, so this is the rate of the reaction. So that means that when we plug that into the previous equation, we can take out CA0 as a constant, and we can have that the batch time is equal to the change in the concentration, so from 0 to the final conversion, XA, is DXA over minus RA. And again, we take CA0 out as a constant. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this made the modelling for an ideal batch reactor a bit easier. Please check out the rest of our channel for more videos like this. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and also take a look at our other courses via our website. So we'll hope to see you again.